In this video, you're going to learn how to never again be that naive dinner host who guests talk about on the drive home. Today, you're going to learn how to cook chicken breast properly. Welcome to the Council of Cookery. Now, if you watched part one of our series, welcome back. If this is your first time watching the video, Welcome again. Yes, you, right there. Welcome. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. Let me lay it all out for you. I hope you're excited. You don't have to wing it if you want good chicken. So the first way that uh, you can make sure that your chicken is moist is by evening out the thickness of the chicken breast. As you can see, the chicken breast is uneven on one side. So by the time you properly cook the thick end, the thinner end is going to be overcooked. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your chicken, put it into a plastic bag, find a heavy bottom something. If you have one of those meat hammers or meat mallets or whatever you want to call them, you can use one of those. I don't or my wife threw it away. You are going to sledgehammer that meat until it is beaten within an inch of its life and thin enough for you to cook. Then what you're going to do is take said meat out, season it up. What I've done is I've used salt, pepper, lemon zest, and guess what? Dried thyme. Dried is actually a really great way to utilize that spice cupboard that you haven't touched in a million years. After you put it into a hot pan, you're going to sear that one side until it is nice and golden brown. Flip that side over and then put it straight into a preheated 425 degree oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. When it comes out, it should be firm to the touch, but not squishy or rock hard. If it's rock hard, you've lost the battle, my friend. If you have a reliable thermometer, feel free to use it. Again, you're aiming at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The second way you can introduce moisture to your chicken breast is by brining it. Now, brining it is a fancy word for uh, marinating in salty liquid. What you're going to do is you're going to take a mixture of water, salt, and sugar, bring it to the boil so that everything is combined well, and then throw in some flavorings of your choice. You can choose thyme, you can choose peppercorns, garlic, uh, and this is really where you can take it to the next level and be creative. So in my case, all I did was added some garlic, peppercorns. I know, really creative, right? Once the brining process is done, make sure to pat it off dry and do the same process as you did before. Sear off that meat until it is golden brown on one side and again, place it into the oven at 425 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. What I found in my testing is that chicken brining is actually a lot more forgiving than the other method because of all the moisture you've packed in. Disclaimer with brining, typically a brining process you want about four to six hours. Make sure that you don't over brine it because it could end up being a little bit too salty. And that's really all. It is a relatively easy thing to cook chicken breasts well. Uh, you need maybe a good thermometer or you just need these really great methods. Make sure to press that meat to make sure that you haven't overcooked it. Really try to go by feel because that's one of the best ways that you can learn how to be a better cook. And if all else fails, cut into that piece of meat to make sure that it is not pink. Pink means salmonella. 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 And you don't want that. Thanks for joining us on the Council of Cookery. To stay up to date with what we're doing, you can hit the subscribe button or the like button, and you can watch this other video right here.